Main card, UFC 277, heavyweights collide. We have the former UFC heavyweight title challenger, the Black Beast, Derek Lewis. The number one knockout artist, not just heavyweight history, UFC history is Derek Lewis. He's taking on the former Fight Nights Global heavyweight champ, Sergei Pavlovich, a man who wasn't able to get it done in 2018 against one Alistair Overeem. But since then, three big time wins, some layoffs in between, and his last time out knocking out old, old Shamil Durkima and making it look very easy. So for Pavlovich, this is a guy that I focused on a lot on my Twitter because I didn't understand why he was in the rankings. Like, if you look at it, he knocks out Maurice Green. You know, Crochet, boss. Maurice Green, two years and eight months ago. And up until about six months ago, he's ranked between 11 and 15 in this division. Didn't fight. There were rumblings. There were bookings. He did have three different fights books. They all fell out due to his own accord or reasons and factors that had to do with him against Cyril Gaunt, Tom Aspinall, and Tanner Bozer until he fought back early on this year when he knocked out of Dirk Imov. But when I look at it for Sergei Pavlovich, this is a guy that has one skill. Move forward and beat the daylights out of his opponents. And that's pretty much it for Sergei Pavlovich. I mean, you look at it, strength the schedule, strength the training camp. Obviously, with Fight Nights Global, he was fighting, you know, ghosts of former heavyweights over there with that, Fight Nights Global. That's like, the big thing with Fight Nights Global, and not to harp on this too much, but like, again, when you look at a lot of their champions, they do bring in some talent who's well-known, but definitely guys who are beatable and he, expected to lose. Yeah, I mean, his last win with the belt before he fought over him, he had fought baby Fedor, Kirill Sedelnikov, that really could never get it going, whether it was Bellator or others, but... Baga Gaev's a good win from 2016, but you go down through it, you're beating guys you should beat by first round knockout, and Baga Gaev, I guess, by decision. But for Pavlovich, I look at this one, his training camp centered around him, but others over across the way. And there's guys like Max Grecian, Alexander Volkov. I threw out another name there. Uh, a guy that he trains with is Nikita Krylov as well, that went ham last weekend. But for Pavlovich, move forward, really big. Really long for this division. I mean, you don't need to look at more than the picture to realize that. But 84-inch reach, he seems to use it well. Good pop at the end of his shots. But again, Derek Lewis is one of those guys that can do the old duck under. And that can really mess up. I almost said frig up the style of a guy like Sergey Pavlovich. Here's my problem with this fight. By every metric, Derek Lewis should win. Like, Sergey Pavlovich doesn't even deserve to be the favorite. He doesn't even deserve to have the odds be anything closer than a plus 200. Because Pavlovich has beaten three guys that Derek Lewis would destroy if he fought at this stage of his career. Shamil Abdurakimov's not that good anymore. Let's just say it what it is. Remember, remember when he fought Curtis Blades in Abu Dhabi? And he got taken down more times than anybody had in UFC history and basically gave up. He was so tired in that fight. That's the problem with Pavlovich. He beat... The crochet boss, a guy who got dropped by Jean Volante, so we can just stop it right there. Marcelo Golm, who hey, I did not think he anything. He just beat Davion Franklin. Big Good. win. And where is it? Where did that fight take place? Not in the Why UFC. Because my thing is, Marcelo Golm's not here anymore. That tells you how good Marcelo Golm is. Pavlovich has three wins over guys that, again, Derek Lewis would destroy if he fought them at this stage of his career. I just don't know what stage of Derek Lewis's career he's at right now. Because I said last weekend how weird it was after Robbie Lawler was champion to see him be like the 11th ranked welterweight in the division. It just didn't make any sense to my brain. This guy was either ranked number one or champion for as long as I had followed MMA. Derek Lewis is in that category at this stage where he's fought pretty much everybody in the top five. He's beat some of them, lost to a lot of them and now we just don't really know where he sits in the whole entire division to me this fight comes down to just overall motivation more than anything because if this is Derek Lewis with one foot out who might have a lot of injuries throughout his career which is the truth like I, I was listening to a Bill Simmons podcast a little while ago, and they were talking about Paul George, and he was like, I'd hate to do an MRI of Paul George's body. Just because of all the injuries he's had, it would light up like a Christmas tree. Derek Lewis is in the same camp. He tore his ACL against Junior Dos Santos. He's had more back issues than I can count at this stage of his career. And his last fight against Ty Tuivasa, he looked terrible and unmotivated. And the, the trouble for me is for Derek Lewis, so I went back on my mind, because I remember after the Cyril Gone fight, he said, you know what? The pressure, it's in Houston, this and that. Derek Lewis before Cyril gone was 10-0 and fighting in Texas. I know, I said it was really bad that he lost a hometown fight, and you said it was stupid for saying that. And so he loses in Houston, be that what it may. He gets his win uh, sandwiched between his two losses here against Chris Dacus. Murphy. And then he loses against Ty Tuivasa. Again, that fight was also in Houston. So he's lost his last two in Houston. He has one fight in Dallas, and he won that fight. So this is his, this is his second fight career in Dallas. He's what now? 10-2 and two, fighting at home uh, in Texas. But I look at this fight. Yeah, Derek Lewis against Tai Tuivasa. 
Didn't look all that great. Got backed up. Sergey Pavlovich to Ivasa early though, for sure. And you know they got in tight range, obviously behind the black line, up by the cage. This is going to be in Dallas, so again, big cage, big heavyweights, a little bit different than the smaller cage at uh, you know the UFC's apex. Pavlovich is one of those guys that fights behind his length. Yes, he's tall. Yes, he has a propensity to lean back. So Derek Lewis could clip him, as we always know with every Derek Lewis fight. But you look at the odds in this one. Lewis open minus 115, minus 106 for Pavlovich, open minus 105, minus 116. So the odds have basically flipped. Topology votes, Matt. They're surprised to us. There to you. Derek Lewis, most knockouts UFC history. I'm going to say over under 60% Lewis. I think it'll be like 75% Lewis, to be honest. He's pretty famous. 1,297 total votes, 51% Pavlovich, 84% by knockout. For the 49% that have Derek Lewis, 88% by knockout. The fans say knockout, 51% have Pavlovich, Matt. Who do you have? It is going to end in knockout. I feel very comfortable making that statement. Derek wow. Lewis got knocked out by Sean Jordan from a hook kick, okay? Sergey Pavlovich has beaten guys who are no longer in the UFC, and that tells you all you need to know about this fight. Like, again... It, fight fight doesn't go decision. One side has it, minus 600. Yeah, it's not like a hot take by me saying that. Just, the, like, I couldn't imagine the carnage that would happen if Derek Lewis fought Marcelo Gold. I couldn't imagine what would happen if Derek Lewis fought... Uh, even Shamil Abdur came off at this stage of his career. Like, Sergey Pavlovich has beaten guys that I fully expected him to beat the whole entire time he was in the UFC, and he lost the one time I expected him to lose in a very, very difficult debut against an Alistair Overeem, who did show that wrinkle of his game that we don't often see. We saw the grappling side of Alistair Overeem. Here's the other X factor we haven't talked about yet. Derek Lewis is kind of underrated as a wrestler. I know no one likes to admit it. I know it's not a sexy thing to say. Everybody likes to knock out punches, but he's got a pretty good double leg when he does shoot for it across the cage. He's very explosive with that one technique. And I gotta be honest, if there's ever a time where Derek Lewis is gonna shoot for a takedown, it's probably gonna be this matchup against Sergey Pavlovich. I hate that I'm ever so slightly favoring Derek Lewis for a wrestling edge that I perceive that he will have in this matchup, but I would much rather pick the guy who has lost to great fighters than somebody who's looked good at being the fighters that I always expect him to beat in the first place. I thought Derek Lewis was going to beat Tai Tuivasa. He wasn't able to, but I think Tai Tuivasa's looked pretty good ever since he came back to the UFC. He never really got cut in the first place. It was a weird situation anyways, but still, I think Tai Tuivasa has made a big evolution in his game, and I think a lot of people are falling into recency bias with this. They're looking at Derek Lewis and how poor he looked in his last performance. They're looking at how good Pavlovich has looked throughout his past few fights, and I think they're putting a lot more stock into Pavlovich beating guys who, again, he was fully expected to beat in all those matchups. So, so. are you throwing shade at anybody that takes Pavlovich? No, 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 no. All my Sounds point is, like it. I just don't think you can make a solid argument from Pavlovich without any... Like, he beat three guys that Derek Lewis would absolutely run through. He has not fought anybody on the level that Derek Lewis has fought. So I think it's very hard for anybody to sit down and say, hey, I think Sergey Pavlovich is going to win because Derek Lewis has fought guys who fight in a very similar manner to him and he's been able to stop a lot of those guys. So other than motivation, I do like Derek Lewis in this fight. He could show up flat because he does every now and then, but if you just look at both guys technically, well, Derek Lewis is the better striker. He's more heavy-handed. I even think he has the faster hands too. So I, I do like Derek Lewis, but again, I don't... Don't like it when I have to question a fighter's mindset because that is a very big key to the fight. But skill for skill, I do like Lewis in this fight. I think Pavlovich is faster, longer. I think he knocks out Derek Lewis in Texas. Well, he could, but again, he's only beaten guys that everybody thought he was going to beat. Derek Lewis has fought some of the best fighters in the world. So again, Lewis has been in there with some all-time greats. He just knocked out Curtis Blades not that long ago. Like he really does have an advanced skill set to face some of these top-tier heavyweights. I just don't think Pavlovich is on that level. Yeah, I think he's been knocking out guys that he should in ways that he should. And for those reasons, I happen to beat Derek Lewis. Again, length, pop at the end of his shots. You back up Derek Lewis. Again, you get him behind the black line. You either get two things. You get him back up against the cage, waiting, waiting, waiting. Or, excuse me, he's able to land that big time shot and finish a guy. So for those reasons, we're split on the pick. I'm going with Russia's Sergey Pavlovich to get the win. You have... The home state guy in Derek Lewis. He is a Rockets fan, though, so maybe he's not happy with fighting in the Dallas Mavericks arena. Maybe that's true. We'll see what happens with Lewis. Let us know down below in the comments section who you have. This is going to be an entertaining one because it's on the pay-per-view portion of the card, and we have the sidekick live with the channel. So we really want to hear your thoughts, whether it's on the live show or here below in the comments section. Two title fights up at the top. Co-main and main event in rematches. You're not going to want to miss it. Keep it locked in with Fight Night Picks. We always say, let's, let's get, get into it. it.